Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing another episode of Inside the Mind of a Pro, a series I was doing earlier and I'm bringing it back officially to the channel. And if you guys don't know what it is, don't panic, I'm going to explain it right now. Inside the Mind of a Pro is a series where I take a pro game either from a tournament or from the rank ladder at the highest level and I analyze it. Usually it's one of my games because the whole point of the series is that I analyze it and I give you guys my thoughts and what I'm thinking of in the moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and break down how a pro would think and it should be interesting and fun to listen to for everyone here. And I got really good feedback when I did this series before we did two episodes of it. Uh, and this game we're gonna be reviewing today is one of uh, the best arena games I've ever played in my life. And in my opinion, it's one of the best arena games that's ever been played in a tournament before as well. So it's a very bold claim, I know, but it's an absolute banger of a game. And it's not one of those that stretch for two hours. So it's you know definitely nice and concise for us to enjoy. And it's part of the grand finals of Warlords 2. And this is game one. I'm not going to spoil the results for those who might not have seen it yet. But it's me and Tato going head to head here. And that's the Burgundians going up against the Bohemians. So I'm going to go ahead and play. And we're going to go ahead and analyze the game together here. And uh, see what I've been thinking. See what I was thinking about in the moments. And enjoy the game together. Uh, quickly, before we get going for real, I'm going to just ask for a few points of feedback. Number one. I'm using the camera here. Let me know what you guys think about the camera in the series. Also, in the earlier episodes, I was talking in a bit more of a softer tone, calmer tone. Let me know if you guys prefer that tone or me talking normally like I will be talking right now. I would like the feedback on that. And then the third piece of feedback that I need is simply on the Fog of War. In the series, we're going to be reviewing it from my perspective. So I'm going to have the Fog of War here. Do you guys actually like that? Do you prefer that? Seeing it from my thoughts 100%? Or should I just watch like completely uh, all visible for people to just enjoy the game as a replay? Or do you like the fact that I'm showing it 100% from my perspective? So three things. Please give me your feedback in the comments. Uh, and um, if, this, if this series does well, uh, I will be featuring it once a week on my channel. And I'll look at your feedback to make sure I'm doing what you guys want to see. And then at the end of the day, the views will talk. So I'm basically a massive you know, company. I don't care about emotions. I only care about views and money. So that is what speaks. And if that's happening, I will continue doing the series. And if it doesn't happen, I'm canceling the series forever. It's going to be gone because it doesn't give me views and money. Okay. Okay, back to, back to reality. Anyways, uh, I do need your feedback on that. So let me know. And yeah, once a week on this channel, could be good if the series is nice for you guys. All right, now let's hop into the actual video. So, Bohemians versus Burgundians. The first thing we need to do, guys, and my editor is going to throw it on the screen, analyze the Civ matchup by looking at the bonuses. Super important arena. Nothing's going on. A toddler can do this opening. And, um, you know, uh, while this is happening, I'm going to be focusing on what the civilizations are good on. So if you analyze Bohemians, what are they good at? They've got the gold upgrades and the stone upgrades for free. They've got better pikemen or better spear line uh, against cavalry. Uh, they got the chemistry that is available in an age earlier, and they have the hoofnits in late game that's pretty solid. That's like a good summary of the behemoth bonuses. They also get like the fervor and sanctity affecting villagers, which is a nice boost. So that's kind of how behemoths are, you know, rolling with. So in a practical sense, what does this mean? Well, the spearman line uh, being stronger means that going spears or pikemen with monks to contest the relics is going to be a really good choice, number one. And as far as the economy goes, Going for monk bushes or fast imps will be much better for behemoths. Why? Because if the behemoths want to go for town centers, right, and they want to add in economy, they would need to get food for the town centers. And in order to get food, they need a lot of wood for the town centers and for the farms. And so food and wood is not what the behemoths want to be doing to maximize their advantage of getting the free upgrades. Instead, they want to take gold and stone. And that's not good for town centers. That's not good for villagers. That's great, though, for monk pushes, forward castles, maybe the sight wagon, and fastums. That's what the behemoth uh, qualities are geared towards. If you notice, by the way, I was maximizing my efficiency. And I was making sure I killed the deer only when the first one ran out. So... Again, on Arena, nothing much happening, so we maximize our efficiency 100%. So that's what the Behemoths want to do, and we've seen now that Tato is up to Feudal Age, and he's going up really fast. I didn't know this at the time, but now we see from the Capture Age review. So I thought Tato was going to play something a little different, because if you play standard play, which is like Light Cav or Spear Monk for the Relics, Light Cav Monk usually wins, especially with Burgundians going over to my Civ. My Civ is the opposite of what Behemoths want to do. They want to go Gold Stone, I want to go Food Wood and get some town centers going because I get the wood upgrades earlier, one age earlier, and at a discount. So Burgundian economy is crazy in the food wood department, and that's exactly what I want to do. A standard game where I go 
you know, light cav monk for the relics and boom it up. But of course, since Tato is going to be going for the fast up, that's going to dictate the pace of the game and I'm going to be forced to react right away. In backstory, I did practice some arena, a lot of Burgundians, but I didn't practice against Bohemians because my prior understanding is that Burgundians should just win, like the spear, uh, you know, the relic war. And if the Burgundians win the relic war, we actually get food and gold from the relics. And so that's huge. So I, I thought like if I win the relic war with Burgundians, I would destroy Bohemians. I'd get the imp faster, hand cannon, bomber cannon. And although they have the battle late game with the Hoofnates, usually they don't get there. That was my understanding of the matchup. But seeing Tato Pickett in a grand finals, right away I doubt myself. And I think, okay, he's going to do something a little bit different. He's going to try to throw me off. And so I'm ready to adapt to what he goes for. And right away when I see his fast uptime, I send my scout back to my base. And I'm just waiting to see what he's going to do. I'm waiting 20 seconds before I scout the map. Because if I show my face and I'm still in Dark Age and he sees me, then he's going to kill my scout and I'm going to be very unhappy. So I'm waiting until Feudal Age before going out again. Little details like that that kind of make the, the top players be consistent, by the way. I'm going to go market blacksmith. Again, super, super simple build. If you guys want to know how to do these builds, I actually offer them to Twitch subs and Patreon members. And link to both of those is in the description below. I offer you guys a PDF on how to do it, like literally where every build goes, and a video tutorial on how to do it. So there's no excuse. If you want to know how to do this, know how to do these builds, definitely check that out. I don't have a stable market build. I have a blacksmith market build for booming, but it's very similar. You can adapt it if you if you really want to. And there, there it goes. I'm up. It's perfect build order. No idle TC time. But Tato is faster. I went up a little bit later to be able to force some scouts. Tato's up faster. Why? We don't know yet. We're going to have to wait and see. I know that he's up faster. That's the information I have. I don't know what he's planning. But again, from prior understanding of the matchup and from the fact that he sold stone, which I actually do know. I can check in the market that he sold stone. I know that he's going to be rushing me. So I know now, because he sold stone, it's not going to be a forward castle. And he's not going to be adding TCs. So it's going to be, basically, I narrowed it down to a monk rush. Now, I didn't expect him to add spears. I, I thought it was going to be a pure monk rush. But Bohemian spears do more damage. And it's really interesting. I'm going to let you guys know this now. I didn't know this at the time. Bohemian spears, two shot a scout. And Bohemian pikemen, two shot a light cav without bloodlines. Burgundians don't get bloodlines. And regular spears take three hits each, spears and pikes, three hits each to do the same thing. And that's a really big thing, like taking an extra hit. If I can only take two hits, I can basically never engage spears. Like I'm just gonna get destroyed, right? And so now I've gotta be super careful around these spearmen. And so I scout the two monasteries here. I know what he's gonna go for, it's gonna go for the rush. And I'm still gonna to commit to my plan, guys. Like even if he's doing something weird, I'm not gonna stop doing my plan. My plan was to get a town center and play for the relics in the center with light cap. Now, okay, let's adapt it a little bit. Maybe I can't play for the relics because, well, he's gonna have more control. He's gonna pick them up faster, but let's still get an extra town center. A town center right here with the wood sounds pretty good. You know, that seems like a, a solid thing to do. And now I see a siege workshop, so I know I'm getting pushed. So I'm gonna go light cap right away. Again, that's my plan. I send some builds here. I'm gonna go for a town center. And the reason I do a town center on this side is simply because I have a lot of bills here. And so town center here, I'm late to do it because I'm sniping a, a monk. There it is. G bait the spear, get the monk. Pretty good first kill there for me. Then I go for the town center. Okay. So the reason I don't go third to town center right away, you can see I, I can afford it right now. Because I think I'm going to get pushed, I decide, okay, if I go for the third town center right away, it can be really risky. I don't know if he's going to go all in castle or if he's just doing a small push before going up to imp. He can do either. And I'm scared of him going just all in castle, like three, four mangonels, redemption monks right away, and then I just die if I go third town center. So I decide to play two TC only and then try to survive uh, from there. Maybe in hindsight, three TC right away could have been fine, but I decided to prioritize a, mo a, a, a monastery so I can have something to heal my light cap. So it's kind of like my thought process here, whether it's correct or not, we can analyze a bit later at the end of the video. So now my main goal here is to try to pick off any stray monk. Obviously Tato's no slouch, right? But any player can make mistakes and leave their monks out of nowhere. So I'm going to try to run in and if there's ever a gap, I'm going to snipe a monk. I'm not going to ever lose my light cap to kill one monk because truthfully, 100 gold for behemoths that have both mining upgrades, it's pretty easy to get. And so I'm not going to be wasting my heart to get food for his monks. And this is when I realized, by the way, like I said, I didn't know beforehand. 
A pike, two shots of light, Kevin. That's terrible for me. Now I realize, wow, this is really hard. This is really hard. So I stopped making light cab after this one. I realized it's not much more I can do. Sniping monks is nice, but it's going to be hard to snipe monks if he's got the pikeman upgrade already and he's two-shotting me. So instead, what I try to do is just defend. And I think, okay, maybe it's time for a third TC. This is exactly what's going through my mind. I see the push is not picking up. So I think he wants to build up to a fast stint. And so in that... In that you know, perspective, I think a third TC for me is needed. So at least, even if I have the slower imp, I can have more bills and more economy. And again, because I didn't know if he's going to go hard push, like, he can afford more siege. He could, in theory, make two, three more mangonels, and then it, then if I made the third TC, I'd be kicking myself. I'm dead. So now I keep myself flexible, because if he does go for the push, I can make a siege shop. I can make a second stable. I can, I can do something. If I go three TC right away, I think it could be a little bit... A little bit more dangerous. Now he goes for the redemption. At this point, I still don't know. I, I only see that he's got Sanctity in. But hey, looking for a monk. Maybe I get rewarded. Nope. Pikemen are there. Go back. And now I try to use my monks to convert his pikemen. I do pick up this uh, rogue monk, though. There's still two relics on this side he hasn't taken. And then he goes to atonement as well. Here I'm trying to snipe the ram, because the ram represents a really big threat to me. It can go forward and attack my buildings, which I really don't like. And just a back and forth struggle here. You can see me picking ahead in build count. I know this, so we can see exactly the build count. I know I'm ahead. I don't know the exact amount, but I do know I'm ahead. And I actually get a nice conversion there on the scout, which is nice. And I pick up another monk. So, as you can see, my light cap investment paid off, but I noticed he's got atonement because he converts my monk. And now I'm like, okay, probably stop making monks. I think this is my, like, my last monk and that's it. Convert a pike, deleted him. So the trades have been pretty even. Like, trades have been like 50-50, 100% of the time. And now I go for the third town center. Maybe a little late on, in hindsight. So I think a little bit earlier would have been better. Get out a few more bills. And here he converts my stable. And so I'm forced to go out. Gotta get a monk. Didn't quite get him. And I feel like I might invest uh, a lot into getting it. It's a bit of a weird situation, but I do find a monk, again, because of my good movements. Ended up losing a light cap on the way out, though, so still a pretty good trade for him. And now with Redemption, he's converting all my buildings. At this point, I feel like it's a really rough spot, because although you can see it here, he's on stone. Even though I don't know that, I had a big feeling that he was on stone. Like, I, I know after a push like this, what's the most devastating? A forward castle. And because he's converting my buildings, I know he's going to clear the way, the way for a forward castle. I do manage to pick up another monk here, but I believe one of them gets converted. No, both get converted, which sucks. So again, I'm always taking really bad trades at this point. At, at, at first it was even, but now, too many monks, the, the trades are really hard. Now I see a second stable. Well, it's actually just a one stable, because he converted the first one, I get loom. I realize it's a very bad spot, and... I just feel like there's not really much I can do. If I go Siege, he's got Redemption. If I go Monks, he's got Atonement. If I go Light Cab, he's got Pikes. I feel like I got kind of checkmated right now. And I have only one advantage. I've got more economy. I've got better economy. I get hand card here. And I just want to double down into my economy now. And, and just you know, focus on getting you know up to Imperial Age and, and move on from there pretty much. I do convert a Villager, which is nice. But, I mean, it's a small victory. I'll take it, but I send him back, actually. <laughs> send him back to work on a farm. Ah, oh, that's plus one bill. Good. And now something that needs to be talked about as well. Not only does he have the relics. Actually, he only picked up three, not five for some reason. That was kind of weird, but... Uh, something that needs to be talked about. I'm running low on space. Like, I don't have a lot of space here. This is why arena pushes are so deadly. I have maybe a few farms here. A couple buildings, a few farms here, and that's it. Look at me, I'm farming in all the space I have. It's tight. And I don't really have another option. And look at this brutal castle that comes forward from Tattle. And now I think I just lost the game. I think I'm in huge trouble. At this point, I'm panicking. It's game one of a finals. And guys, I have rock solid mental. I never tilt, okay? But I'm, I'm naturally panicking because, you know, this is something I'm unfamiliar with. I didn't practice too much arena. And I felt like, wow, Tattle played an insane game so far. I felt completely checkmated. I couldn't get any relics. I didn't take any good trades. I literally can't react to this. And I just feel like, wow, I feel like I'm, I played pretty well, but he just bested me. That's kind of my thought process right now. 
And I recognize that space is a big problem. I, I need a blacksmith now to get a siege workshop to click up. I'm actually missing a building. I have a castle. I don't know where to put it, though, because I'm out of space. This town center and all the farms I've been building up, gone in the blink of an eye. Delete a few farms for a castle. And at this point, I'm like, okay, let's make a castle. Go up to Imp. Maybe I can trap him down. I didn't know he's up to Imp, but I had a good feeling because of the score. And here I'm thinking, please let me get a conversion. Please, saving grace. 0 for 3, buddy. 0 for 3. Unfortunate. And really now, I'm I, I, I'm completely out of options, you know? Obviously, judging from the score, or, you know, from the economy situation, I am up a lot of bills. And this is where the play comes in. I need to pause for this one. Think of what I've just analyzed. I have a feeling he's faster than imp. I know I messed up my imp time, so I know him later. I have no space back home. I feel like if I do nothing and I just wait, I'm dead for sure. I'm going to get pinned in my base. Doesn't matter if I'm up 30 bills. I'm going to run out of space. My bills are going to be just chopping useless wood, which doesn't really matter. And I'm going I'm to die. Simple as that. So what do I do? I do a move that should never work. And in fact, it's an incorrect move because doing this is just pretty bad. But I did it to give myself a chance because I know that not doing this move, this move I'm going to lose 9 times out of 10, 99 times out of 100 even. I decide, okay, let's play towards a win condition. What's my win condition? Staying back is not going to work. My win condition is potentially expanding here without him seeing me and getting on some golden stone, potentially, and buying myself more space. So what do I do? I send basically 20 bills. I start with 10 and I go out to the left-hand side. And I was counting on not being spotted, but alas, he spotted me and I decided to commit to it anyways. And this is the turning point of the game, in my opinion, not because now I'm winning all of a sudden, but now I have some counterplay. Now, all of a sudden, his attention is, div is divided. He's not just hardcore pushing me from the front. What are those 10 bills doing? You know, we got to keep an eye on those. And I'm sending the wagons out around. He doesn't know what I'm up to. He's I see a monk. And so now his attention is split, which is very important. If he doesn't address these bills, I'm going to get a town center. I'm going to get maybe more stables, more farms. I'm going to get space. If he addresses the bills, I get a slightly better situation back home. Send a couple of light cav out to help, you know, settle in with these bills. Ideally, I wanted a stone or a gold. Since he spotted me, I'm going to settle for a wood line instead. And I changed this to a town center. Uh, you can see I'm just freestyling it. This is not planned. I just, uh, <laughs> I realized I needed a town center because the wagons were coming. And now he's faster and he goes for the monk text and he goes for the trebs. And I'm screwed. I go for the only option I can do, which is skirms. Skirms will help against the pikes, against the monks. And I feel like skirms in general are the only thing that actually give me a solution to the problem. I can't wait till hand cannon near an imp because I need chemistry and you know, that just takes too long. And the hand cannon are also really expensive. So I feel like I don't have that much gold left. So skirms are naturally my only choice. Again, space is tight. So we're rebuilding houses like this. I do something weird here. I'm going to lose this castle, but I repair it a little bit anyways, because I need to buy a little bit more time. Right, a couple more trap shots. If I can buy that time with a bit of repair, that's cool. So that's kind of what I'm thinking here. I'm not trying to keep this castle alive. I'm not making any traps, but I'm just trying to keep myself alive. And now I go for another basically hero play. I just send another 10 bills out. I'm trying to expand on this side. I'm trying to make the game messy for him. And he's got some wagons here, but Phil's actually have an attack bonus against wagons. So that's what I'm keeping in mind. And so these bills, instead of sending them to the back where it's claustrophobic anyway, there's no space for them. I just send them out. If I lose them, I lose them, but they're going to buy me some time. And he's sending the wagons, and he sent some bills over here that I did see. And so now, my plan is kind of working. I'm buying a lot of time, I'm buying his attention, and I'm focusing on a push here. Notice, he doesn't have another forward castle. He's not really using his traps to full degree, he's just kind of keeping them in his castle. And I'm getting some time for Bomber Cannon. Chemistry's not even in. So imagine if he came with another forward castle. I got nothing. I got nothing. But now I get some time. Because I sent the bills out, I got some time to make some cannons and give me a chance to push this back. And take a look. All I did was just send bills out. I have no plan for these. I'm not doing anything crazy with them. I just sent them out to buy me some space and some time. And I'm still up a lot in bills. And I have a decent composition now. I've got some skirms. I go into a few hand cannoneer now that I got, you know, uh, Imperial Age. Hand cannoneer is going to be good against the, the wagons mainly. Now that I got chemistry in. And the main thing is the bomber cannon coming out. So obviously skirms just, you know, do nothing against the cannons. 
I'm waiting for the hand cannon to come out, but the skirms can snipe the monks pretty effectively. And I got the bomber cannons to help push everything back pretty much. So now, all of a sudden, my army's decent. And look what I'm doing here. More of the same. Send the bills out. That's the castle. It could have been in my face. It's now on the outside. The treb that could have been in my face. It's now on the outside. And I just keep sending them out. I'm buying time and I'm buying his attention. And meanwhile, I know those fills are a distraction, but Tato doesn't know this. Tato thinks they have something crazy planned out, maybe. Tato's distracted a little bit. I know my main plan is to regain my base with this gold, there's stone, and there's a lot of farms that I still want. And keep in mind here, like, if Tato doesn't react, I get a TCN, I get some stone. So he has to respond, but the more he responds, the more I just cook in my base, right? The more I'm just reclaiming my ground. Bomber cannons do more damage. He does something really nice. Credit to Tato as well. This is why it's such a good game. I feel like both players played really, really well. Like, it's not just me playing well. It's also him playing very well. Uh, that put me in such a bad position, right? Can't forget that. And he still continues to play well with the monks near the castles. And he's going to try to convert the cannons as soon as they come in range, which really delays my pushback, right? Because he's got those monks, which are super annoying. And again, here I clear up the, the units. And when he doesn't respawn, I'm going to send my bills out and kill the sight wagons and it's hard for him now he's gonna lose a treb here he's got to react in different locations and now the vill count's getting closer but i'm buying myself more time i got the score lead now so things are working out those can go out to kill the sight wagon and now i've got some stone all of a sudden so the disaster play of sending 20 bills out in the middle of nowhere under my opponent's vision actually bought me enough time to push back my main base and all of a sudden now I've got four cannons, I've got skirms, I've got hand cannon near, and I'm ready to make the winning play, which is killing the castle. And I'm going to send my skirms underneath the castle so his monks can't convert my cannons, let my cannons do their thing, and I push it back. The castle's down, the skirms are moving forward, and I've got the hand cannon near in the back just to take care of anything that the rest of the army can't take care of. The siege is going down, and he's still trying to, you know, kill this town center but this town center is the sacrificial town center and i just use the bills to kill the hasset wagon then i go for the treb right after and meanwhile all my focus is on the front reclaiming my entire base even after all this though uh i, I think i go for the trap after this as well oh no i, I didn't uh, the game's over gg's called uh and even after all this like at this point i didn't know that i was dominating i thought the game was still close he ends up calling it though i'm gonna now analyze the, the whole game properly um, he ends up calling it here, and I was really, really relieved because I, I still felt like my position wasn't great. Like, I had to reboom, set up some town centers. This was still very awkward, but judging from his, you know, town, wasn't looking great either here. He was heavy saturating his gold, didn't have that much left, like, had one more. These were going to be in my control soon. Uh, and his economy in general, one TC. He might lose the relics in the center. So I can imagine, like, why he thought it was over. It, it probably is. But at this point, I was just a huge sigh of relief. Game one of the finals, and I take the win from such a bad position. And I want to give an analogy of this game similar to a game, like a, a, you know, a game of chess at the highest level. Sometimes, if you make the predictable move in chess, even if it might be the best one, you're just in a lost position. So what do you go for? I'm not a chess expert. I play for fun. But what, what my players might think of is doing some other moves that their opponent might not be ready for that can force a mistake. And similarly here, the correct, the theory move might be to just put the bills back, continue making economy and try to push back. But that gives me very little counterplay. And so I went for the move that on paper sucks, sending 20 bills out in the middle of nowhere, never advised. But in this particular situation, it diverted Tato's slow army and his attention away from my base. And it kind of messed with his decision-making because he might've thought that I had something you know, crazy in mind, when really I just want to snag some stone. And in hindsight, if he just went straight up for another forward castle, he probably would have just won. Even if I had the 20 bills outside, he probably would just kill my base. I lose all my farms. And the 20 bills outside, suddenly, maybe they become 40 if I 3 DC boom on the outside. But nothing crazy comes of that. And so he still had the winning position. But my bad move, my, you know, quote unquote bad move, ended up being a crazy move and it won me a basically unwinnable game. And this is why, in my opinion, this is the best arena game I've ever played in a tournament and one of the best arena games that I've ever been playing in a tournament, despite it being only 34 minutes long. I think it was an absolute banger.
That's going to be it for this video, though. I'm going to go ahead and call it here for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, like I said, let me know of the series. If this is something you want to see more, just the rest collected. And uh, I'd be more than happy to make more videos like this. So thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.